Map of all the countries where it has never snowed, and unsurprisingly, a lot of these places are next to the equator. Now we have most of Central America and the Caribbean included, but the biggest mystery is how did it snow in the Dominican Republic? I know mountains are a factor, I don't think they have that tall of mountains. But I'm not so sure, because at its highest elevation, DR can in fact snow. I would have literally never believed this otherwise. Their highest peak is 10,000 feet up, so I guess that explains it. The only other Western Hemisphere country that it's never snowed in is Uruguay. I'm sorry to notice the theme here is that a lot of these countries are are going to be small. The more land you have, that increases the chances that there's one spot this happened in. Obviously, if you're a tiny island, you've probably never seen it snow, although that's not necessarily the case for Hawaii. I know it does snow in Hawaii. All these countries are very hot and jungly, so I get this. Jungly, just making up terms now. And then a lot of these places in Africa are just a giant desert next to the Sahara. But what I'm really starting to notice is this really all comes down to elevation, and the African continent is, for the most part, very flat. There's not necessarily a whole lot of mountain ranges here. Countries that have at least 50% forest coverage. Now, the country with the most amount of forest in general happens to be Suriname with over 92%. It does sit in a part of South America that has a lot of trees. It also helps that it's pretty small. Pretty much every country next to the Amazon is over 50% forest. Of course, this is a very green part of Africa. Not surprising here either. I am a little shocked by Japan though. Japan and the Korean Peninsula. Well, North Korea. Yeah, I get it. Probably keep the forest around just so they can hide what they're doing back there. It probably also highly depends on what exactly you consider to be a forest. Like how many trees need to be there to be a forest? Has anyone ever figured out how many trees you need to be a forest? Because this definition is not gonna get the job done. The counties which have more livestock than people. To review over livestock are just farm animals, basically. So turkey, chicken, cows, pigs. Wasn't really expecting to see you guys here, though. And is duck really a farm animal? Without even checking the map, I already know the state of Wyoming is going to be really lit up. Oh, but you know what? Not exactly as much as I thought. I thought the whole state would be covered because we're dividing it by counties. But I guess it is hard to put these livestock in every single county. Now, this map is only showing us chicken, cows, and pigs. And I'm a little surprised that we don't see even more yellow. I mean, you can pack in a lot of chickens. I wonder if there's a reason why we have all the chickens in, like, the deep south. So you need a lot of land to have a lot of cows. So I'm thinking, you know, since these areas aren't very populated anyways, that's why the blue's all over here. A little surprised to see California lit up as it is, but then again, there is a lot of farmland in the center part. Wait, what is this black color? Is Montana growing demons? Oh, the black is supposed to be all three of them combined. I wonder why they decided to converge all right here. Looks like all the states have at least one county, except for Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, even New York, which I don't know why I expected New York to not be included on the list. There is all of upstate. And then there's Arizona, which is barely squeezed in with one county. It's probably hard to have livestock in really cold areas and hot areas, though. Every single bubble on this map represents 100,000 migrants living in a country. So unsurprisingly, there seems to be a few Portuguese migrants that have moved to Brazil, and then a whole lot of Russians into Central Asia. But the craziest of them all, the USA. I don't even think we can begin to divide this up. There's so many things going on in here that I, I can't even figure it all out. I also don't exactly think the bubble or the circle is supposed to be where all of them are going, obviously. Like, I don't think 100,000 Indians moved to this part if Canada were like 12 people live. For Mexico, they actually have a lot of American migrants. Australia also seems to be pretty diverse. A lot of British, Chinese, even Indian. Most of India, by the way, is getting a lot of people from Bangladesh and Pakistan. I didn't think I'd see that. A lot of people from Afghanistan and Iran. And if you're Japan or South Korea, you're getting a lot of people from China. What's interesting is not a whole lot of Japanese are moving to South Korea though, or maybe they couldn't squeeze them all in there. I know Japan really likes Brazil and vice versa, so it is funny to see one Brazilian bubble up here. You literally can't even tell what's going on in Europe. The slightly magnified view, it seems like Germany's getting a lot of them. Mostly like Turkey and Russian and Ukraine. There's even an animation showing the global migration here. So starting in specific countries, you will see exactly where they're moving to, and this is a way easier way to see which populations are moving to which spots in the world. Unsurprisingly, they don't move too far, I guess, unless Unless you're from South Africa. South Africa going pretty much everywhere, all the former like British Commonwealth countries. I see you, Elon. Love how the Kiwis just go on over to the continent next to them. Brazilians are surprisingly going all over the place. Some, of course, to Portugal. Japanese Brazilians, we talked about this. So yeah, this is some really awesome data. Please go sub to this channel. I wonder how many of those migrants are moving directly to New York City, and that's how it used to be. Here are all the American states with less population than New York City. Unsurprisingly, Alaska, and then this whole region of the country. Pretty much all of New England, which is crazy. Pretty much the only places that aren't included are the most populated, obviously, like California and Texas, Florida and Illinois. If New York City was a state, it'd be the 12th most populated state. That's how crazy this gets. I'm actually surprised that New Jersey isn't included. I didn't know this many people lived in New Jersey. Oh, but it's really close. New Jersey is just barely ahead, and this is just New York the city, not New York the state. There's still more that live in the entire state of New York than just the city itself. That's okay. So the population density isn't super off. How to laugh online in different languages, or 
basically how to type it out. Haha. <laughs> First of all, what the hell is going on? Has my life been a lie? I always thought Jaja was exclusive to just Brazil. But I don't even know if I could say what Brazil types out. Wait a second, you're including LOL? LOL is a thing. How is LOL not the most popular in the US? I remember like 10 years ago, LOL would probably be, but I think it did switch to haha. Please tell me LMAO beat somebody. I think only the aliens use LMAO. Let's go South Africa. Is it just me or does anyone else use LMAO only when they're laughing at someone? Like I'd be putting my friends on blast and I gotta finish it up with an LMAO. What the hell is even that? Dude, that's not even a, those are, what is that? Seen a little bit of raffle come out of Africa. I like just spamming H. That seems simple enough, Libya. Ah, the British using LOL more than everyone else. What's up with that? MDR. I've never heard of MDR, which I think, interestingly, a lot of the other, like, French colonies in Africa aren't using MDR. Is laughing a form of greeting in Iceland? They don't laugh in Greenland, they just show polar bears on ice skates. What's up with these numbers? Asia, China, 2333, three, 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 then 555 five, five in Thailand? Gonna laugh by typing out my phone number. Oh, and the rivalry only continues here. Imagine having to type K dash K dash multiple times, that's rough. I feel like if your form of laughing includes more than just two letters, then that's a problem, that's too much. I'm not gonna be laughing at shit. Official names of countries, do they use? use Republic or Kingdom. Now most of the world seems to be using Republic, but there are a few monarchies that are holding it down. United Kingdom seems to be the most famous with this word. I always forget that places like Spain or the lowland countries are technically the Kingdom of Spain or the Kingdom of the Netherlands. What are the chances of both these small places in South Africa being kingdoms? Sometimes the Kingdom word really enhances the name overall, I feel like. You gotta be like the United Kingdom and force people to say it. Well then again, you, you couldn't just call this place United. Like Kingdom of Morocco, that just sounds cool. You should always do that. Make everyone say your full name. Remember, the full name of these places do get kind of weird, though, sometimes. Some of the nations that don't use Kingdom or Republic, like we have the United Mexican States. I always forget that's their full name. The Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, which makes me feel like I'm living in the medieval times. Bolivia, is this full name even necessary? Why does the Mongol nation feel like you're going to try to revive Genghis? How to build a campfire that will last through the night. I can only build a campfire that lasts two seconds. My strats for campfire is just, like, put as much gasoline on the match as possible. So place tinder on top. That's immediately, I guess, what I've been doing wrong. Stack wood in a pyramid shape. Position wood with minimal spacing. I thought that goes against things. Doesn't need like air to breathe. Obviously you want the biggest logs at the bottom and then make it safe by surrounding it with rocks. This really does not look like it would work but then again I was never like a boy scout or anything. How does it continue to light the wood underneath? I, I mean, I guess it would. Ah, oh, get it, would. Uh, because I know if you light the bottom one, then all of it would get set ablaze, and then it'd instantly go out in like 10 minutes, 30 minutes. I'm gonna try this next time I go camping, but I have literally no faith I'll be able to handle this. Now, this makes a little bit more sense to me. I don't know how I'm gonna get these iron rods here, but this will supposedly last 14 hours. I can see logically how this would work. Game Risk. I'm assuming anyone that watches this channel probably played Risk before. I feel like that was the origin story of so many mappers out there. So if you have one dude and you're trying to attack another one dude, you have less than a 50% chance. Don't do that. Two to one, much better. Better. It's three quarters of a chance of winning that. Then everything after like two, if you attack with three, four, safe bet, you're gonna be fine. You literally never want to attack a defender if they have more units than you. That's, I think, pretty obvious. You kind of don't want to attack anyone that has the same amount of units than you. Although, I mean, here it is this purple one. It gets better the more you have, interestingly. Like the more units you have, if you have 20 units versus their 20 units, you have a higher chance of victory. How does that work exactly? So by the later part of the game, when you have a bunch of things on the board, you can be a lot more safer. You just want to attack all the time. This is That's what I'm really seeing. Even if there's only like a one or two unit advantage. I guess that's why risk in late game gets pretty chaotic. Worldwide tea production. So in the very beginning, in the 1970s, India was making the most tea, unsurprisingly, since the British had control of them before that. China is second. China with their, they, they do love them, their uh, water and leaves, right? Isn't that the meme? The leaves, it's just like flavored leaf water. Uh, Iran, surprisingly pretty high by the 2000s. Why was Iran making so much tea? Sri Lanka, uh, not shocking, a part of British Raj, basically. Uh, what about Pakistan and Bangladesh? Oh, and China just explodes in their tea production. Finally, Kenya also very high as well. Argentina and Turkey. Turkey, I think, is the number one consumer of tea, right? Per capita, they actually have the British bee. Or are the British going to take back their title? Number of Earths we'd need if world's population acted like the following countries. So, shocker, we here in the U.S., um, we, we use a lot of resources. So, we would need five Earths. Okay, unironic shocker, though. Why is Denmark so high on this list? What are they doing in Denmark? How are they second? Good thing there's not a whole lot of Danish 
finish run around, I guess. South Korea is third. I also didn't really expect them so high. Germany, UK, I was anticipating to see you guys here. China is interestingly high, and so is Brazil. China and Indonesia both have a lot of population, so is that concerning? Well, US has more population than uh, Indonesia, but Indonesia is going to pass us up like we saw. I want to know exactly what it is that we're using, though. Like, what is each country individually going through a lot of? Does Denmark need so many Earths to continue to fuel their Lego empire? I feel like this graph just put more questions in my head than answered anything. And big thanks to the patrons. My name is Joe Biden. I love being Joe Biden. Diary of a wimpy kid, the catfish. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Fat nuts. A fat normal. W, Bring back Poland ball. Luxembourg Cowboys lover. 83. Kukov, Bruni, Marco Hindera. Max Cooper. Orton, five, Philip six, ten, Robert E. Rye the Pie. Mexican 7, Why am I doing this? William the Conqueror. And Subar A. N.